So it's the end of an era for Palermo. After failing to submit paperwork to register for the upcoming Serie B season, they've officially been relegated to Serie D, the fourth division of Italian football. A combination of bad ownership and bad luck have put them in the mess they currently find themselves in today. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom for the Sicilians. If you take a look back a few years ago, you'd be shocked to see the players that used to play for the club. A lot that went on to fulfill their potential later down the line or just be absolute world beaters in their career. So today's question, what if Palermo held on to their stars in the last 10 years or so? What if they never sold their players? Where would they be? What could they achieve? Well, let's find out in yet another FIFA 19 career mode experiment. So we're going to go ahead and replace Kievo Verona, literally the worst team in Serie A last season, getting relegated. So they're going to be replaced by this Palermo team just to see if they could compete in today's current football climate and survive in Italy's top division, a league which they used to be in year in, year out. Not too long ago. But before we get into the video, make sure to smack the like button down below. Hit the big red subscribe button as well as we're on our way to 20k subscribers before FIFA 20. And also comment down below your favorite ex Palermo players and what teams I should do this kind of experiment with next. So we're going to go through the squad in Karima. And as you can see, our manager name is Maurizio Zamparini. Was the owner of Palermo and the man who kind of drove them into the ground. He's a man that divides opinion. A very polarizing figure in Italian football. But he he was the madman behind Palermo's success and let's say failure. So we've gone ahead and put this Palermo side into FIFA 19 career mode. We're going to take a look at the squad of sold players. Starting off in the goalkeeping position, that's right. It's going to be Salvatore Sirigu. The now 31-year-old keeper has been solid for Torino this season. It continues to go from strength to strength. Former PSG player as well. And as you can see, Palermo have had quite a few decent goalkeepers here. They did have Emiliano Viviano on the books as well. He is now at it. Spal in Serie A, as well as Stefano Sorrentino, the now nearly 40-year-old goalkeeper, played last season for Kievo in Serie A. So, a solid three goalkeepers there. As we move on to the centre-back position, Kamil Glick, the Polish defender, who only got a handful of appearances for Palermo, but he went on to do quite well for Torino, earning a move to Monaco. So, he turned out to be an alright player if they ever held on to him, but he could have been a very solid player for them today. We move on to his centre-back partner, a player which we all know well. We've had to go and create him, Andrea Barzali because EA have actually removed him out of Karima so we've had to recreate him we put his exact stats in there but yes Barzali used to play for Palermo as well this squad is just going to get even crazy as we move on to the Danish centre back Simon Kaya now out at Sevilla in real life but he did have a stint out in Sicily as well as one of the most randomest players I didn't even realise was at Palermo before researching for this video Sol Bamba who had a pretty decent season for Cardiff in the Premier League this season as well as Giancarlo Gonzalez the Costa Rican centre back who played for them a few years ago. He moved on to Bologna, now at LA Galaxy. Now onto the wing back position, Matteo Damian, the Italian that never seems to leave Manchester United, no matter how strong the rumours are linking him to other clubs. And thinking about it now, he could have been a very decent player for them, as well as Emerson, the now Italian left back, who is at another Premier League club in Chelsea. But yeah, two pretty decent left backs there as we move on to a big one, Javier Pastore, who had a breakout season at Palermo, then moved on to PSG. The Argentinian midfielder got his start in Sicily and then moved on to bigger and better things. He's now at Roma in real life, but he once was a very, very solid player alongside a lot of Argentinians at Palermo, which we are going to get to later on in this video. But the now 29-year-old will be a marquee man in this side and he's one of the famous, famous ex-Palermo players that they have let go of. We move on to Brian Cristante, an Italian midfielder who technically was on loan at Palermo, but they did have him, so they never ended up selling him. I've just included him to this side. And then we have the Slovenian Jasmine Kurtic. Now at Spal in real life he's done really well for them. And is another kind of solid Serie A player for a lower to mid tier side in the league. As well as the now 33 year old Luca Rigoni, the Italian now at Parma. That is going to be another one. Alfre Aqua, the Ghanaian midfielder. Yet another solid player for a lower tier to mid table Serie A team. To yet another big one. Yet another Argentinian. Franco Vazquez, the midfielder who played for Palermo for a few seasons. Made a name for himself along Side, another Argentinian, Paulo Dybala. Juve's own marquee man, and imagine if they held on to this guy. However, the big clubs came knocking, and Juve picked him up a few seasons ago, and it was only up from there for the Argentinian. He played for Palermo in Serie B and Serie A, so he was a loyal servant to the club. However, it was only a matter of time until he got snapped up by a big team. As we move on to a player that killed it in real life this year, qualifying for the Champions League with Atalanta, Josip Ilicic. The centre-forward attacking player, 83 rated. 
He's now 30 years of age, but he did play for the Sicilians in an earlier part of his career before his Fiorentina days, before his Atalanta days, and he is one that most people forget about, but we move on to a kind of fringe player. I just included him for the squad dip, Robin Quaison, the Swedish striker, now out in Germany, but it's another big one. Andrea Bellotti, the young Italian striker who's now the captain of Torino, represented Italy a bunch of times. He once started off at Palermo too, and then it's another big one. Edinson Cavani, the Uruguayan striker. Another famous one that Palermo have sold over the years. They offloaded him to Napoli for a big fee, and then yeah, we all know what happened later down the line. He moved to PSG, but it's another massive one. Palermo have had some world beaters. They've had some top, top players. We move on to a few that aren't really that amazing, but we've included them in here just because we have Abel Hernandez, yet another Uruguayan striker, after he had some amazing cards over the years. And then I've just included Kyle Lafferty in here because why did Kyle Lafferty ever play for Palermo? I have no idea. But the Northern Islander, he was just one of the weirdest players to ever play for the club. I have no idea why they picked him up, but there's a fun fact for you. Kyle Lafferty used to play for the side. And there you have it. The side Palermo could have had if they've never sold their star players. It is a very, very solid side, and I'm keen to see how they're going to do in Serie A this season. That is how the side are lining up in a 4-3-1-2 formation. A very attacking, positive formation. We've got the strike partnership of Cavani and Belotti up top. Dybala in the number 10 role. Vasquez, Pastore and Ilicic are going to be the three central midfielders. And then the back four, Emerson, Barzali, Glick and Damien are right back. Sirigu in net. That is the bench and those are the reserves. I think they can cut it out in Serie A. We're going to give Barzali the captaincy and see how the side do. I think he can lead the team out to some glory in Serie A. I'm kind of predicting maybe a top half finish. Maybe even pushing for a European position but I just love that starting 11. The depth kind of worries me in this side but yeah, look away Palermo fans that is one killer side so we're gonna seem to the end of the season we're gonna see what the Sicilians can achieve here in FIFA 19 career mode and see what happens if Palermo never sold their players let's go all right so the simulation is over season number one is done and dusted we've picked up a few injuries here I'm keen to see how this side have done in the league let's go ahead and check it out and they finished in fifth that is a very interesting position nearly qualifying for the Champions League seven points off a fourth place finish Juve finish on top Top, Roma, Inter and Milan finish off the top four. And the Sicilians are back on top with the big boys. They're back in the mix of things. And oh my, how that contrasts real life at the moment. We finish above the likes of Fiorentina, Lazio, Napoli in the Serie A as well. And it's Genoa, Udinese and Parma going down to Serie B. But what a season for the Sicilians. Let's see who the star performers were of this side. However, in the Coppa Italia, not much luck as they lost 2-1 to Juventus, the champions of Serie A. 2-1 in the round of 16. So the cup run was cut short. All right, let's take a look. Who were the big players for this side? And as expected, Paolo Dybala, the man in the middle, the number 10, scoring 13 goals and six assists. You'd expect a bit more from him, but that is a very nice season from him. Yet another Argentinian killing the game for Palermo. 11 goals and seven assists for big Franco Vazquez. And then Josip Ilicic getting eight goals and two assists. Cavani with eight goals and five assists. Andrea Belotti with a nice seven goals. Javier Pastore getting four goals and four assists. We continue on to see who else? Oh, it was Tirigu getting 13 clean sheets in there. Sorrentino didn't play any games. Glick did all right in there with 10 clean sheets. As we move further down, Lafferty and Hernandez not really getting too many games. Bamba getting one game. Season one, and they nearly, well, they qualified for Europe. They nearly qualified for the Champions League. We're going to go ahead and see one more season to see how they would do in the Europa League and the Serie A at the same time. We'll see how they go balancing two competitions. But it's season one success for Zamparini and his men. Can that success? Success carry over in season number two. Let's find out. Now, I didn't expect season two to be any better than season one, but the ex Palermo team have actually done better than their first season in Serie A. They finished in third in season number two with 71 points in a comfortable top four position, qualifying for the Champions League. That is absolutely insane. Cagliari up in fifth, but Inter and Milan join us in the top four with Juve being champion. I'm very impressed with how this side have done in Serie A. As you can see there, Lazio, Napoli, and Roma finished outside the European positions. Benevento, Frosinone and Empoli going back down to Serie B. As we take
take a look at the Coppa Italia. It was a heartbreaking elimination to Milan. 4-3 on penalties after it was 2-2, but still a very solid run. And this is the competition we were interested in. We finished top of our Europa League group, undefeated in Europe with 14 points, 4 wins and 2 draws. Lille finishing second with us. We move on to the round of 32. Who did we play here? We played Villarreal and won. We're on to the round of 16. What happened here? We lost 3-1 to none. So a nice little Coppa Italia run and a nice little Europa League run. They've balanced three competitions rather well. Now let's take a look at our uh, top performers. And as you can see there, we've got three players in the top goal scorer list. Cavani, Belotti and Dybala, all with 14 goals. The goals very spread out amongst our best players there as we move on to see if anyone else was in the top. Nah, it's just, it's just our best three pretty much. Belotti, Dybala and Cavani all making a name for themselves in Serie A. So Dybala ended up being our top goal scorer in all competitions with 19 goals and 9 assists. And obviously Belotti and Cavani being up there with him with 18 goals and 15 goals respectively. Josip Ilicic got 8 goals and 7 assists. We move on to Kwaisen. He did quite well. 4 goals and 2 assists. Cristante did well. Franco Vazquez was our leading assist man with 10 assists throughout the whole season. We move down and as you can see, Barzali has retired. Sorrentino has retired. So we've got a few less players than we've started off with. But the main three carrying this Palermo team is Dybala, Belotti and Cavani. It's fair to say that. With Dybala now at a 93 overall, can he carry this side in season three? How is the ex-Palermo team going to do in the Champions League? I'm keen to see that. Let's get into season three and see what the Rosanero can pull off. So it's the third and final season and it's probably the worst performance the team have had yet, finishing in ninth position. But it's understandable considering players have gotten older. They haven't made any signings or improved the squad. So you'd kind of expect it. But a ninth place finish is still very, very decent. No European football for next season. However, Juventus continued to dominate without their star Dybala. And we finish with a comfortable 54 points in the league. And still no luck in the Coppa Italia. They got knocked out 1-0 to Fiorentina in the quarterfinals. And in Palermo's first ever season in the Champions League, they got put in Group D alongside Spurs, Club Bruges and Spartak Moscow. So a fairly decent group for the Sicilians. And they ended up finishing in second quarterfinals qualifying for the knockout rounds with nine points, two wins and three draws, one loss in there. The side doing quite well in their first ever stint in Europe's best competition, but let's see how they did in the round of 16. No way, they beat Real Madrid 3-2 on aggregate. You're kidding me. Let's take a look at the quarterfinals. And they lost to RB Leipzig of all teams, 5-2 on aggregate. A decent quarterfinals run for the Rosanero, but considering they beat Real Madrid, they could have beat RB Leipzig and they could have even been in the semi-finals. That is a very respectable European campaign. And as you can see here, Dybala was nearly the Capo Canoniero, the top goal scorer award in Italy. But it went to Ronaldo with 22 goals, with one more goal than Dybala. He got 21 in the league. And yeah, it's just an absolutely brilliant season from the little Argentine getting 23 goals and 7 assists in all competitions as well as Andrea Belotti with 14 Cavani still performing even though he's 34 with 10 goals on 5 assists Josep Ilicic getting 6 goals and 8 assists as well as Vazquez with a decent little performance in there a few center backs getting in amongst the goals as well but yeah Pastore with 44 appearances he was a solid player for the team a solid squad player but that is going to be the final look at the performances Dybala and Belotti were the two big players let go and I feel like in the long term could have helped Palermo in their stay in Serie A. Unfortunately, they went off to bigger and better things throughout their careers. But that is going to be the final look at the squad. That is Palermo if they never sold their best players. You could probably already predict that they would have done well. A European, Two European campaigns, one in the Europa League, one in the Champions League. Three solid Serie A seasons. They could have been a top, top Italian side. And especially from Sicily, it would have been nice to see. Giving the south of Italy some rep. But there you have it. There's the question answered. What if Palermo more kept all their best players that would happen but that is FIFA 19 Karimo guys hopefully you did enjoy the video if you did make sure to leave a big like down below let me know what other teams I should do this experiment with hit that big red subscribe button down below we're on our way to 20,000 subscribers follow me on Twitter the link is in the description turn on the bell all that good stuff guys show your support on the video I've been BCHD I hope you did enjoy and I'll see you in the very next video